Hi, and welcome to this Latino Ministry for Christ channel. Before we proceed to the reflection you have come to see, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel, to activate the bell, to give us a like, to share this video, and to leave your comments. This will allow the algorithms to promote the reflections so that more people may be reached with the gospel. God bless you. In the reflection for today, the other phase of the sacrifice. 56 men signed the Declaration of Independence in the United States. Their conviction resulted in untold sufferings for themselves and their families. Of the 56, five were captured by the British and tortured before they died. Twelve of their homes ransacked and burned. Two lost their sons in the Revolutionary Army. Another had two sons captured. Nine of the 56 fought and died from wounds or hardships of the war. Carter Braxton of Virginia, a wealthy planter and trader, saw his ships sank by the British Navy. He sold his home and properties to pay his debts and died in poverty. At the Battle of Yorktown, the British General Cornwallis had taken over Thomas Nelson's home for his headquarters. Nelson told General George Washington to open fire on the Nelson's home. The home was destroyed and Nelson died in bankrupt. John Hart was driven from his wife's bedside as she was dying. Their 13 children fled for their lives. His fields and mill were destroyed. For over a year, he lived in forests and caves, returning home only to find his wife dead and his children vanished. A few weeks later, he died from exhaustion. Sacrifice is necessary to obtain peace and freedom, and it is also necessary to achieve life. Christ our Lord is a living example of this, because freedom requires sacrifice. In today's reflection, we are going to read from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the passage well known to those of us who profess the faith in Jesus Christ. The book tells us about the sufferings that the Messiah would undergo to demonstrate his love for us sinners. The passage tells us, We despise him and rejected him. He endured suffering and pain. No one would even look at him. We ignored him as if he were nothing. But he endured the suffering that should have been ours, the pain that we should have borne. All the while, we thought that his suffering was punishment sent by God. But because of our sins, he was wounded, beaten because of the evil we did. We are healed by the punishment he suffered made whole by the blows he received. All of us were like sheep that were lost, each of us going his own way. But the Lord made the punishment fall on him, the punishment all of us deserve. He was treated harshly, but endured humbly. He never said a word, like a lamb about to be slaughtered, like a sheep about to be sheared. He never said a word, he was arrested and sentenced and led off to die, and no one cared about his fate. He was put to death for the sins of our people. He was placed in a grave with those who are evil. He was buried with the rich, even though he had never committed a crime or ever told a lie. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 3 to 9. The Lord faces the martyrdom of the cross and confronts 
three great realities of sin of his time. The personal sin of each one of the men who are supporting the crucifixion and who make fun of him. The structural sin of an unjust society that cannot leave the just alive. And the sin of the corrupt religious structure which dehumanized the human being. The sacrifice of Jesus on the cross from the human point of view is the saddest, the most horrible, and the cruelest of spectacles. We see in this brutal sacrifice reveal man's capacity for evil, my own and that of all of you who are listening to this reflection. But from God's point of view, from the divine perspective, it shows us how deep and unconditional God's love is for us sinners. And this is the other phase of the sacrifice. Today, we are going to reflect on the words spoken by Jesus while hanging on the cross and also on the words that were addressed to Jesus during his agonizing torment. The crowd that passed by and saw him hanging on the cross said, You are going to tear down the temple and build it back up in three days. Save yourself if you are God's son. Come down from the cross. Matthew chapter 27 and verse 40. The mockery and contempt of those people was infamous and miserable. They expressed the poison that dwelt in their hearts. The chief priests, scribes, Pharisees, and elders told him, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Isn't he the king of Israel? If he will come down off the cross now, we will believe in him. He trusts in God and claims to be God's son. Well, then let us see if God wants to save him now. Matthew chapter 27, verses 42 to 43. They were only phony religious. For that reason, on one occasion, the Lord Jesus called them whitewashed tombs. The hatred in their heart was evident. The least in their life was mercy and love. Do you remember that the Lord hung on the cross with two criminals? The one who made fun of him and approached him said, One of the criminals hanging there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. Luke chapter 23 and verse 30. Throughout the Gospels, we see how the people, the soldiers, the chief priests, elders, scribes, and the one who was crucified with him mocked and rejected him in that moment of agony. It is more or less like when we wait for someone who is doing something good to make a mistake so that we can criticize him. We are sure he will make a mistake since sooner or later we all do it. It is just a matter of waiting. Eventually, that person fails. And there we go out to seize the moment and extract the poison from our soul. Jesus is rejected by the people who are there, by the authorities, and by the main unscrupulous religious of his time. Some years ago, during the Special Olympics in Seattle, nine participants, all physically or mentally disabled, assembled at the finish line for the 100-meter race. At the sound of the shot, everyone began to run, not in a hasty way to say, but with a desire to run and win. Everyone except a young boy who tripped and fell on the asphalt. He tripped several times and began to cry. The other eight participants heard the boy cry. They all stopped and turned to where the crying boy was. Then they all went back to where he was. A girl with Down syndrome bent down and kissed him on the forehead and said, This will make you feel better. Then the nine put their arms together and walked together towards the home stretch. All the people in the stadium stood up, applauding them for several minutes, and some called these people retarded. The people who were there that day still tell the story. Why? Because within us, we know this. What matters in this life is not only that we win ourselves. What matters is helping others win as well. 
even if that means we stop a bit and change our course. Someone said a candle loses nothing by lighting up another candle. That is to say, as Christians, we must help each other to reach the final goal, which is eternal life. It is curious that in the stories of the gospel, from whom little could be expected comes the positive words of recognition. From the centurion, leader of the hundred soldiers, and the criminal who was crucified next to Jesus. The centurion said, truly this was the Son of God. And the other man says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The other side of the sacrifice is seen in the words that Jesus expressed while hanging on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27, 46. Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Luke chapter 23 and verse 34. Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Luke 23 and verse 43. He had come to seek the human being, to reconcile men with God the Father, and also to show mankind the true meaning of life, to live in love, in peace, and in justice, as well as seeking God's will to be done. His words, his teachings, his miracles were signs of the goals he was seeking, prayer, love, and service, the tools with which little by little he moved the hardness of the human soul to win their hearts. Seeing the other side of the sacrifice, let the love of Jesus lead us to be good Christians and be what God has planned for you and me to be in this life. Once upon a time, somewhere, and at a time that it could be any time, was a beautiful garden with apple trees, orange trees, pear trees, and beautiful rose bushes. All of them happy and satisfied. Everything was joy in the garden, except for a deeply sad tree. The poor tree had a problem. He didn't know who he was. What he lacked was concentration, the apple tree told him. If you really try, you can have tasty apples. Do you see how easy it is? Do not listen, demanded the rose bush. It is easier to have roses. And do you see how beautiful they are? And the desperate tree tried everything that was suggested to him. And since he could not be like the others, he felt more and more frustrated. One day, the owl, the wisest of the birds, came to the garden and when he saw the despair of the tree, he exclaimed, don't worry, your problem is not that serious. It is the same as many beings on earth. I will give you the solution. Do not dedicate your life to be as others want you to be. Be what God wants you to be. And to achieve it, listen to Him. And with that said, the owl left. What God wants me to be, the desperate tree was asking himself. When suddenly he understood and closing his eyes and ears, he opened his heart and finally could hear, you will never give apples because you are not an apple tree, nor will you bloom every spring because you are not a rose bush. You are an oak tree and your destiny is to grow large and majestic, to shelter the birds, shade the travelers, give beauty to the landscape. You have a mission fulfill it. And the tree felt as strong and secure, and it became all that it was created to be. And so he soon filled his space and was admired and respected by all. And only then was the garden completely happy. My dear friend and brother, how many will there be oaks that do not allow themselves to grow? How many will be rose bushes that out of fear of the challenge only give thorns. How many orange trees that don't know how to bloom. In life, we all have a mission to fulfill and a space to fill. Our loving and kind God, teach us to understand that your love is so great and has no comparison or understanding. 
Teach us to see the sacrifice of Jesus, your son, from the perspective that you see it. The great feeling of goodness and mercy that comes from your heart for us sinners. We ask this under the inexhaustible merits of Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord and Savior. Amen.